Hey guys, Sarah here from Recovering Book Quarter, and today I am going to do my 2021 book superlatives. Now, I know that other people do these as well, but I did make, not that all of these are made up, but I came up with all of these on my own. So I will put the different categories down in the description if you are interested in doing um, this as well with my categories. Uh, I will have links also to all of the books that I discussed today in the description box. And I'm too lazy to grab the books from my collection. <laughs> so I'm going to put a picture of the different books I talk about right over here, which is why I'm scooted over a little bit. Um, I do have these all on my computer. So I'm going to be looking down while I like off and on while I do this. Okay. So number one, best new to me author. Oh, I should also say I have my winner for the category and then I have my honorary mention for each category as well. And the very last one is my favorite book of the year, along with five additional honorable mentions. So make sure you stick around to the end. Okay. So for best new author to me, number one is Alice Feeney. And I read Rock, Paper, Scissors. It's the first book I've ever read by her. And I absolutely loved that book so much. It was a five star, which is not something I give out easily for thrillers. Um, I have to really not see the ending coming or the twist for me to give it a five star. And on this one, my guesses were all over the place and I did not find out real answers until Alice Feeney wanted me to. So she is it, best new author to me. And my runner up is Diane Chamberlain, which I heard about from Krista over at Books and Jams. And I read Dream Daughter, which had been brought up several times on her channel. And also during, um, she does these like uh, uh, bestie, bestie Zoom call things, uh, if you're a Patreon member. And several people had also brought up Dream Daughter during those bestie calls. And um, it was, it was wonderful. Like I, I could not, it's one of those books that like, I just could not stop thinking about after I had read it. So, and I know there's, she has a lot more and I can't wait to read more from her. So she is my honorary mention. Number two is a series I can't wait to read more of. So number one for that is the uh, Temeraire series. I read His Majesty's Dragon and that is by Naomi Novik. And this was, um, I had done a, uh, like a book trade with, um, Chrissy over at Chrissy Soul, who I will link down in the description. Um, she's primarily active over on Instagram, but she does have a booktube channel also. Um, and we gifted each other our favorite books and we had to read those. And this was such a surprise love for me. I fell in love with these characters, the world that, um, she builds. It, it's like a, it takes place in like, I want to say it's like Napoleon time. So it's real world England, but there's magic added into it and dragons and the dragons are kind of like an air force. Um, and it's just, it's wonderful. The world building's great. The characters are fabulous. And I just cannot wait to read the rest of the series. My honorary mention for this one is the Supernatural Investigations series. And this is, um, the first book is Mari and the Night Brothers. And that is by B.B. Alston. Cass and I read this together and we absolutely loved it. If you're a fan of Harry Potter, you will adore this book. There is a magical school um, that, you know, sits behind our real world and sometimes they clash and it's just so beautifully written. Again, the characters, character building's great. This world building is phenomenal and I cannot wait to read more from B.B. Alston. All right, number three, book I want to see turned into a Hallmark movie. So, you know, depending on where you're streaming from, is the type of movie that it is. So you'll see I have some different categories for this. So for a Hallmark movie, I would really like to see Beecham Hall by Danielle Steele turned into a Hallmark movie. 
this was just such a fun book and made me want to go back and read all of Danielle Steele's backlist because she's like an American treasure. She has so many books in her backlist. So many have been turned into movies and this one needs to be turned into a movie. So in this book, we, um, it's, it's loosely based on, on Downton Abbey. Um, so this girl, it's like current times, this girl, uh, walks in on her, her boyfriend of nine years, I think it is, and her best friend, uh, getting busy on her, in her bed. And she makes the decision that she needs to escape. So she goes over to England to this little town where her favorite show is taped. And that show is very much like Downton Abbey. And she ends up working for the show. And it's just, it's such a fun book. And I think it will be fabulous turned into a Hallmark movie. And my honorable mention for this book or for this category is um, Wildflowers from Winter by Katie Ganshert. That is a... Uh, um, a contemporary Christian fiction romance. And it, oh, it was just phenomenal. Uh, it's about, you know, a girl who's living in the big city and goes back to her hometown and has to take care of her, um, her best, her former best friend who they had, they had, uh, had, had somewhat of a falling out. Um, and her, her former best friend, her husband dies and she's going back to help her with that. And she meets someone, uh, there's, you know, a will involved in a family farm. And it was just, it would make a fabulous Hallmark movie. Number four, book I want to see turned into a Netflix series. Uh, number one is Amari and the Night Brothers by B.B. Allison. Like I said, I already told you about it. It would make such a great series because I think of how they did with um, Lemony Snicket and this this will be so good on Netflix. And then my runner up is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I really loved that book. I know that, um, I know that some people did not, but I thought it was a fabulous, um, family drama and the characters, it was just such strong characters and they each really have their own personality that is, um, described throughout the book and you and you really come to invest in these characters and I really do think it would be a fabulous series that could go past even where the book ends. So that is my pick for Netflix series. All right. Number five. Book I want to see turned into an HBO series. So number one for this is The Ladies of the Secret Service Secret Circus by Constant Sayers. One of my favorite tropes is a circus trope. And this one was so good. This was recommended to me by one of my viewers. And as soon as I saw the cover, I was like, I need to get that because the cover is just gorgeous. And circus in the title, it's right up my alley. The circus that they um, describe in this book is just otherworldly. Like, think of the night circus, but to a um, even more villainous, I guess you would say, kind of setting. Uh, it, it just would be fabulous on the big screen. And I think HBO would do a great job with that. My runner up for this one is Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield. And again, this was one that I know some people didn't like. Very literary, uh, but gave me those, the Starless Sea vibes. And again, it's a world that would be so beautifully portrayed on the screen and it's kind of larger than life. So I think HBO would just do a great job with it. All right. Number six, favorite new character. My number one favorite new character is Rocky from Project Hail Mary. And I don't want to give too much about this because I really don't. Talking about Rocky would be a spoiler. Let's just say he is such an just an amazing character. He's funny. He, um, is out for the greater good and he's just a, a light in the darkness in this book. And so Project Hail Mary Rocky. All right. Runner up is Astrid from All Adults Here by Emma Straub. I adored this book. This is one that I read fairly recently 
and it had been on my list for a while that I wanted to read it, um, but didn't really know totally what it was about. Well, it is a family drama, and Astrid is just an amazing character, and she has such an arc in this book. In my heart, I fell in love with her, and it was just so good. I mean, the book was one of those that gave me all those feels. Um, I laughed, I cried, all of that. And uh, this family, but Astrid, who would be the matriarch of the family, she was wonderful. All right, number seven, favorite book couple. Number one is Kristen and Josh from the Friend Zone by Abby Jimenez. And they were just a real couple. Do you know what I mean? Like their arc, it was a real world arc with real world problems that they had to overcome and had a lot of things that you don't typically see in a romance novel. And this was kind of a sleeper book for me. I, I loved it so much more than I anticipated that I would. And this couple, they just, they had to overcome a lot. And I, I absolutely adored them and fell in love with them and want to see what their life looks like moving forward. My runner up is Miranda and Marlo from A Noble Masquerade. So that is the first in the Hawthorne House series, which is a Regency Christian romance. And I, this made me re remember how much I, I love and adore Regency romance. Regency romance is one of the first books, first types of books that ever got me into reading as an adult. I mean, I had books I loved as a child, but they were like the first real adult books that I just consumed at such a high rate. And this one had been given to me by um, a friend who had, who had passed away. She gifted me the whole series and I finally read it and oh, I loved it so much. These characters are so funny. Like I laughed out loud so many times while reading that book and it was kind of at the end too. I'm like holding on to my pants. Like it was, they were so good. They were just classic, classic, wonderful, funny characters and a great couple that you want to see live happily ever after. All right, number eight, sleeper book. So this would be a book that just uh, hit me out of nowhere. Like I had no expectations for it and wound up being absolutely amazing. So number one is The Water Dancer by Tanahisi Kotis. And this one I was having a hard time with in the beginning because I was reading it at the same time I was reading Roots by Alex Haley. And it's, they're very similar storylines, but um, the water dancer has this magical realism element and the characters are so rich and the setting is so rich. And I ended up giving it five stars. I thought it was absolutely fabulous. And um, if you enjoy reading, it, this is a slave tale. And it was just wonderful. It was really good. If you said to me, which one did I like better, Roots or The Water Dancer? Because like I said, same type of genre. I would, ha I would have to go with The Water Dancer. All right. And then my runner up is All Adults Here, Emma Straub. One that I just talked about with Astrid, so I'm not going to talk about it again. But uh, again, came out of nowhere. Never expected it to, um, to be a five star. And it definitely was. All right. Number nine, scariest book of the year. So my number one is Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. And I had to uh, stop reading this one when I was home alone. And I had to stop reading it after dark because it was so creepy. Like, seriously, I was so scared reading it. I'm a fan of Ruth Ware, but a lot of hers end up being kind of like middle of the road for me. But this one is by and far the best Ruth Ware, scariest Ruth Ware that I have read to date. And my runner up is... The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. Uh, this is definitely my favorite of Riley Sager's. And there is an element in here that uh, is one of my phobias. I have this phobia of um, what's under the water. And this is a what's under the water kind of book. I'll just leave it at that. But definitely creepy, scary, uh, absolutely loved it. All right. Number 10 is my biggest disappointment of the year. 
Uh, my biggest, biggest disappointment was Ready Player Two by Ernest Klein. Ready Player One was one of my absolute favorite books. It is one of the books that got me into sci-fi. Just so good. And I thought it, it ended great, Ready Player One. Like, I, I didn't need a sequel. But I thought when she replay or when he um released Ready Player Two, I was like, maybe this is the sequel that I didn't know I needed. And no, I did not need the sequel. It was absolutely terrible like so disappointing terrible that it's making me question ready player one i'm like was ready player one as good as i thought it was maybe i need to go back and read it to see because ready player two was horrible and my runner-up for this is brat an 80 story by andrew mccarthy i was so excited for this book because i'm a huge fan of the brat pack and andrew mccarthy was in a bunch of the movies that i love and I thought it was going to be about his time as a member of the Brat Pack and um, with making those movies and interacting with the other members of the Brat Pack. And it was not that at all. As a matter of fact, he doesn't really consider himself a member of the Brat Pack. So the title, I feel, is very misleading. And um, it was boring. I, I didn't care. And I, yeah, huge disappointment. It was one of my top that I was excited about for the year. Uh -uh -uh. All right, number 11, book family I want to hang out with. Uh, the Riva family from Malibu Rising. Already talked about that. Uh, and I don't know if I said it, but it is very, gives me um, the vibes of like a Rolling Stones figure, like a Mick Jagger kind of figure. And what that would look like if, you know, if he had kids. Well, he does have kids, but like what it, a possible story could be like for him. It's not about him, but that, that's just kind of what it reminded me of. But like I said, the, it was, they were such a fun family. They definitely had issues, don't get me wrong, but I would love to hang out with them any day of the week. And then um, the Strick family, which is the family from all adults here, like I said already, they are just, it was an amazing family. They, um, there was so much that they were dealing with and they had to overcome, but they really they stuck together and their relationships became so much stronger in the end and they're so accepting and I would like to go have dinner with them some night and just hang out. All right, number 12, best looking, meaning that the book itself is just absolutely beautiful. And number one for that is Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, the Mina Lima edition. So Mina Lima is, um, they're an illustrating duo and they had a lot to do with the sets of Harry Potter and creating the, the amazing sets that we see in Harry Potter. And they have a lot of books that I, I pretty much own all of the books that they have done illustrations with. They did a lot with classics, but they are redoing the Harry Potter series and gorgeous. I want to live in these pages. I love them so much. So that is number one. And my runner up is The Dark Between Stars by Atticus. This is a book of poetry and it has some of the most beautiful otherworldly photographs in there that I would love to just get blown up and hang on my wall. Like they're gorgeous. So runner up. All right. Number 13 is the funniest book that I read this year. All right. So number one is You'll Never Believe What Happened to Lacey by Amber Ruffin. And um, this is one of those that's like, so I can't believe these things happened. Like, seriously, that happened? Uh, there are stories about um, what it, racism, inadvertent racism that is experienced by Lacey, who is Amber Ruffin's sister. And it's one of those, you're going, are you serious that actually happened to you? Like, you laugh out loud because it's so ridiculous that if you don't laugh, uh, it's so insanely sad that it happened. But they're so good. It's written so well. I loved it so much, and I think everybody should read it. And my runner-up is, I can't make this up, Life Lessons by Kevin Hart. This was just such a good book. He, sometimes, a lot of times, my favorite comedians, when they write books, it doesn't translate really well to the written language. Like, they're amazing stand-up, like, like Ellen DeGeneres. Um, hers really don't translate well. Uh, Seinfeld. Uh, he's so much, so funny up on the stage, but when I read his books, I'm like, not, not really good. So Kevin Hart, however, 
is his book was just as funny as he is in person and I laughed out loud so many times and his life was just so ridiculous and so many of the things that happened to him are ridiculous and I just appreciate him so much more now um as a performer after reading about everything that he's overcome but it's so funny so yeah absolutely I can't make this up all right book I want to live inside so uh, these are the books that I would like to go back. I would like to live in this world. And the first one is um, Hollow Pox, the Nevermore series by Jessica Townsend. I cannot wait for the next one in the series. But I love the Hotel de Callion so much. Uh, I just want to live there forever. I want the room to capture my feelings and what I need for that day. And it's so magical. The characters are fabulous. And I want to be a member of that secret society. I, it just, I want to live there. It would be, it's such a wonderful escape. And my runner up is uh, Hamilton, The Revolution by Lynn manuel Miranda. I want to go hang out with all these people that played in the Broadway play. Um, the one that they show on Disney Plus, that recorded one. Um, this book was amazing. I am a huge Hamilton fan and I learned so much about the making of this and all of the lyrics to every single song are in there along with some of the background of um how he came up with the specific lyrics and i want to go watch their dress rehearsals i want to be in the audience i want to be backstage i want to hang out with them i want to live in that world all right hardest read so the ones that were just uh, so hard to get through because of the subject matter and the descriptions and everything else but really ended up being so very good. Um, number one is Roots by Alex Haley. Oh, tough man. Seriously. Uh, the, I think the hardest part to read in that was the, the voyage from Africa to America. And just knowing that that was really what it would have been like to be a slave on a slave ship coming to America. And it is just so horrific so horrific it, it, but the whole book overall it's a tough read man it's really really tough and um the second one would be the yellow wife by sadika johnson and this is one that really stuck with me and again oh some of the brutality the scenes in this book the brutality of this book i mean the author did not hold back it was um inspired by a real real life people um and I get harrowing like it was just really a hard read but so very worth it it was such a good book I, I really do recommend it all right number 16 books that made me ugly cry and I'm talking like ugly cry you know that one where you're and, and where it's like half of the book I'm crying through uh the first one is the next person you meet in heaven by Mitch Album I I loved um the five people you meet in heaven one of my favorite top books of all time and i ugly cried through that one and again i didn't know that i needed the sequel but apparently i did uh you know ready player two was the sequel i definitely didn't need the fight or uh the next person you meet in heaven is the sequel i didn't need but i actually did and it was just as beautiful as the first one. Such a quick read. Read it in one day. A couple of hours, actually. And it was beautiful. And I cried so hard. And just fabulous. Fabulous, fabulous. And my runner-up is Handle With Care by Jody Pico. Oh, Jody. I love Jody. And uh, this one, you, you know, Jody Pico always approaches very controversial subjects. It makes you think about them from um, every aspect, every point of view. And you end up like really feeling for every party in there. And Handle With Care, oh, so good. Um, so it's about a little girl who has, um, I don't know the actual name for it, but it's the brittle bone disease. And so just like sleeping, she could break a bone sleeping, just turning over. Um, God forbid she falls down or somebody runs into her. I, her bones just break so easily. And um, 
there ends up being a lawsuit because they need money. They like it, her care is so expensive and there's things they need for her that they cannot get because of the financial burden that it, it would cause. It, and it's just impossible. And so the mother makes a decision to file a wrongful birth long lawsuit, which is where um, the doctor should have given them additional information so that they could have decided if they wanted to terminate the pregnancy. And, oh my God, you get so many points of view, including the little girl who has the brittle bone disease. You get her point of view, her, sis her siblings' point of view, the doctor's point of view, the pa both parents, the mother and father's point of view. And it is absolutely phenomenal. She is such an amazing author. I, I just... I love her. I was so scared, scared of her for the longest time. And, um, now she's one of my favorites and I'm going through and reading her entire backlist. All right. Worst book of the year. Biggest disappointment. I'm sorry. I keep moving wrong because my foot is totally asleep. <laughs> um, all right. Worst book of the year. Number one, leave the world behind by Rumen Alam. I gotta say book of the month. Usually I, I really like their choices. This one, man, I felt like they did me dirty. I hated this book. It was just, there was these really weird graphic sexual scenes, um, descriptions of anatomy. They were gross. I didn't need them. And the book itself, I'm like, what did I re just read? I'm so confused. Like, I couldn't even tell you exactly what the genre is supposed to be for the book. Uh, it was terrible. Hated it. And my runner-up, very, very close runner-up for that. Catherine House by um, Elizabeth Thomas. I was so excited for this book. It just sounded like it was going to be so good. And uh, again, one more I came away from and I was like, I don't, I, through the whole thing, I'm going, I don't know that I understand what I'm reading. Like, what exactly is supposed to be happening here? And kept hoping that it would resolve itself by the end and I would understand. And I didn't. It was horrible. Absolutely terrible. Catherine House. Do not recommend at all. All right. Number 18. Best book of the year. Let me give you my runners, my honorable mentions first. And then I'll tell you what my number one is. So my five honorable mentions for best book of the year. This Tenderland by William Kent Kruger. The most beautiful book. I actually just loaned it to my friend Jackie because... She was in need of a really good book. And I'm like, oh, you got to read this one. It's beautiful. Take your time. You'll love it. And she is. She's absolutely loving it. Uh, the characters here, it's a found family. And um, you just fall in love with them. You're so invested in every single one of these characters. And it's a um, literary fiction that is just so beautifully, beautifully written. Right from like the... Uh, the dedication. It's like one of the most beautiful dedications I have ever read. And it just continues to the end. Amazing. Um, did not see the end in coming. A lot of surprises in that book. And it's so good. Highly recommend. All right. Uh, the next person you meet in heaven, Mitch Album. Already talked about that. So good. All right. Uh, Bear Town by Frederick Bachman. I had attempted to read Frederick Bachman several times and DNF'd them. But this one I kept hearing about and everyone talked about how much they absolutely love this book and everybody needed to read it. So, and I, the premise intrigued me. You know, it's about um, a this hockey town and a girl is raped and how that town reacts to that and how the girl's treated. And you follow through. You, all, you even get to see them like later on. It was so good. It was a tough read. It was a tough read, but so well written and I ended up loving it. So, you know, I went from all these DNFs with Frederick Bachman to a five star, one of the best books I read all year. All right. Then we have Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. Already talked about that one. And then Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. And I don't think I said what the premise of that one is. Um, so the earth is in a bad spot. And it could possibly go away in like 20 years or something like that. Because there's all these uh, like solar flares, I guess, kind of thing happening. And 
ultimately they need to figure out what's going on and so they send a team into space to figure this out and bring back the stuff that they need to bat to combat to this so that the earth can survive and only one of the team survives he wakes up out of the sleep and he's alone in the middle of the space and he like can't remember anything and it sounds so strange and like it wouldn't be that great and it's amazing absolutely amazing okay now my number one best book of 2021 is drumroll please da -da 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 -da. green lights by matthew mcconaughey i read this book very early on it was one of my first reads of 2021 i was really excited for this book um I figured I would love it. I had no idea I would love it as much as I did. It's rare that you see somebody that is literally the whole package. And Matthew McConaughey is the whole package. His writing is as beautiful as he is as a, as a physical person. It's as amazing as his acting skills are. It is just so good. And on so many levels, like the book itself, the physical book, you need to get the physical book, has his writing, his handwriting in it. It has pictures that have never been released before in it. It's got bumper stickers. He collects bumper stickers. There's poetry. It's just a gorgeous book overall. And then the audio, which you also need to get, is read by him. And his voice, oh, I love, I love Matthew McConaughey's voice. There is just nothing wrong with him. Like, he is amazing in every which way. And this book, you need to read this book. It's just so beautiful. So top book of 2021 after much contemplation and going over my Goodreads list because I did read as of today I'm up to 215 books this year. So for that to be number one is really saying something and I loved it. Highly recommend. All right guys that is my 2021 book superlatives. I would love to hear your thoughts uh, if, like I said, if you would like to answer these questions, I am going to have them all down in, um, in the description box, links, to all the books down in the description box. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you would like to see more from me, I do booktube, color tube, and floss tube content. Um, make sure you hit that subscribe button. All right, guys, I will see you in 2022. Bye.